here he is, the modern caveman himself, Dr. Carl. Welcome to Style TV. How you doing? Good, Andrew. How are and you? And you are looking very stylish, must I say, Dr. Carl. I, I can't be looking <laughs> too shabby when I come in here. No, I'm even loving the socks too. He's got pink socks on. He's a man after my own heart, I tell you <laughs> what. Um, today is really important. We're talking about exercise for all ages. The all ages thing is quite mm. important, isn't it? It doesn't just stop Absolutely. at some point. Absolutely. If we stop using our body, then we're going to stop using the function of it. So we're going to become um, stiff and mobile and not be able to have that health that we want in old age. And I guess exercise, it just has to change Absolutely. to adapt to our lifestyles. Absolutely. You're not going to see many 90-year-olds in the gym pumping, pumping iron on the, on the bench press or anything, and I, I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but staying active, staying mobile is where we're key and what we're focusing on. Okay. You've got an exercise. Well, we might start yes. with that, actually, that we're going to do now. So yep. I'll just warn everyone out there that we're going to stand up. So, so. the reason we're doing yep. this one is okay. one of the most common things that we have is an issue with our knees, hips, ankles. That, that's debilitating for us. Yeah. When, when, when we get elderly, oftentimes we have falls. And mm. that's one of the biggest th biggest issues is we break a hip and we're stuck in the hospital. Yeah, the hips we hear a lot about, don't yeah. we? And that's one of the biggest causes of mortality in the, okay. in the elderly is falling. So what we're going to do is keep our lower extremities really good. We're right. going to do some functional squats. Okay. Called. All right. Functional so we're gonna, squats. Functional squats. We're not getting a heavy barbell on us. We're just going to okay. stand here. We and yes, I do know I'm so totally inappropriately dressed, but <laughs> that's okay. All right, here we go. So, so. what we want to aim for is our feet about shoulder width apart. Okay. Right, yeah. There's yeah. no one correct way to do this. Everyone's going to have slight variations, but this is a general way to kind of go about it. Okay. Shoulder width apart. Toes facing slightly out. Slightly. Slightly, just ever so slightly. And what we're going to do is we're going to go down and try and sit at about a 90 degree angle like that without mm -hmm. actually sitting down. So we're going to make our muscles hold us up in that position. So like a squat. Like a squat. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Right so here. I'm going to go like up this here. and go just down like that and then come back up like this. Did and you hear that click? I did hear that click. <laughs> and the high heels, it makes it a bit hard because your heels are automatically yeah, yeah, up yeah, off the yeah. ground. Oh. So one thing that our viewers at home will want to do is keep the heels flat and come down like that. And with you, it's almost impossible in those shoes. Okay, well, I'll try and do something like that, but I'm going down. Oh, yeah. I'm being naughty. I'm being using the back <laughs> on the bottom there. That's not very good there. So how many times should we do that? Until you feel a bit of a burn in the legs. A burn. Yep. A so good burn. A good burn. You don't want it to be painful. You don't want the joint to be hurting. You want the muscles to feel like they're weak and, and, and getting to give out. That's the stage you want it. So I'll give a demonstration here, just a few quick ones, and you want to keep that good okay. form. Just keep going. So you're going at a pace, but we're talking about exercise for all ages. So if you're uh, of an older age, Absolutely. then you just take it a little bit slower. Slower, and if, and if you need to modify it, that's fine. So sometimes we have a little bit of the stiffness in the knees already yeah. starting. So if we go down to here and we start getting pain in the knee, that's where we're going to stop. Okay. And we're going to come back up, and we're going to get pain-free range of motion. And we're going to keep doing that at a pace that's fine for us. Right. So even if you have to go at this pace, that's fine. Okay. Just well, let's take a seat because you've given some great tips there. In conjunction with those exercises, though, yep. we need to think about caring for our muscles. Absolutely. And also our immunity. Mm -hmm. And we may need some assistance with that. Absolutely. The best way to keep our body running and functioning the best is eating a good diet and taking any other nutrients that we might need. Mm. So I talk quite a bit about the paleo diet and other um, healthy foods that are in that. Mm. And one of the biggest things you can do for your joints and your muscles in that diet is have bone broths and other things that contain the connective tissue. Oh, okay. A good so, old bone broth. Good old bone broth. That's a really good thing. And, <laughs> and some supplements that are really popular as a result of that are glucosamine and chondroitin. They're what's found in that connective tissue and in that area, and that's going to really help the body um, put down that connective tissue that we need, and that's important for those joints to be healthy. And are these daily tablets that we should be taking? Yes, yeah, so if you can't get the bone broth in, because sometimes it's a bit challenging to make yeah. that, these tablets are something that you would take regularly. Okay. Um, because if you think back to how we would have eaten them before, they would have been something that we would have eaten every single day as the bone broth. It would have been just a current, constant part of our diet. It would have been something so we'd a bone broth, but just educate us out there. So a bone broth, obviously we need bones for it. As particular right. bones like beef or... Chicken, beef, chicken. fish, all, all the above. Uh, chicken and beef are two of the most common. And so you just, uh, what, you, what you do is you put the uh, water in a pot, get it boiling, yeah. throw the leftover carcass of the chicken in there or the bones from the, from the beef right. um, and you just boil them up and get all the cartilage off the bone and then that starts to dissolve in there and it also gets a lot of the stuff from inside the bone, out, a lot of the marrow out. So and then you'll drain that and it'll be like a consomme of sorts? Or a, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and you just drink, make any soup you want with that or anything you want to make and just, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good for your immunity too mm. um, and it's good for your connective tissue, good for the whole body. 
So you're getting the goodness, aren't we? Absolutely. We're getting the goodness out of, um, of, of a product that could be actually potentially thrown away. Absolutely. Usually we do throw it away. We, we do, of, don't we? We? Think, we think of that as being the bad cut. Just, <laughs> like, just like the organ meats, which are the really healthy parts of the animal, we don't eat that oh, anymore. I'll tell you what, I love lamb's fry. Mm. Just saying that. I know, people don't like that I thought of awful, but I tell you what, it's so good. <laughs> hey, thanks, Dr. Cohen. Thank you for showing us exercise. Some great points there, and it's just taking things in moderation, but do it. Absolutely. Don't stop it. Keep on doing day. it.